Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now today guys, what I have for you today is none other than an inline three cylinder Lego vacuum engine. Now I have never actually built this type of engine before with this type of valve setup. And surprisingly, I don't know why I haven't, I have been putting it off for so long. It actually wasn't that hard at all. Um, I threw, it took me about maybe a couple, two hours to build because I did do a a little bit of testing but um hopefully i am able to get a couple um, good running shots and before we get into some in-depth explanation just do a 360 round tour of it real quick as you can see it does have quite a bit more moving parts than my classic one cylinder or two cylinder vacuum engine but um, that's for the simple fact that a uh, three cylinder requires different timing than one and two cylinders in, in a sense of crankshaft, not actual valve timing. It still has to be 90 degrees offset because of how vacuum engines work. But uh, yeah, so um, without any further ado, um, let's get into it. And before we do, actually, I would like to say thank you all so much for 300 subscribers means the world to me and I'm very surprised on how fast I'm growing which is just a little bit insane to be honest so um, if you guys like my content and you want to see more of this in the future please don't hesitate to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and also turn on post notifications so that you always get notified when I upload a new video anyway guys um, if you would like to join our discord the link will be in the description um, come hang out and chat with us about your Lego concepts we'll be happy to help Anyway guys, uh, let's get straight into this engine. So guys, the first thing that you may notice about this engine is the fact that it actually uses a chain to drive the valve train. So none of my engines that I've built um, require a chain driven valve train. Or chain driven, not train. I don't know why it sounds similar. But anyway, so as you can see, this is a chain. And if you notice, um, uh, you probably can't notice anyway, but um, this is still 90 degrees offset, similar to how an actual uh, one, one or two cylinder vacuum engine has 90 degree offset timing. So um, taking a look at the side here, here's the valve train. As you can see, it looks a little bit different than ones that you might see in the sense that they're actually using these pieces here. Now the reason why these pieces are used is actually because due to its the nature of a three cylinder it needs actually 120 degree offset cranks compared to 90 degree offset or 180 degree offset that is normally done for all the other vacuum engines that I've seen. Now this is achieved by using the actual um, little wheel pieces. I'm sure you can see it. You see these they have six holes all around on a um, cross 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 axle there so you're actually able to achieve those 120 degree offsets real easily so that's um, one thing that's unique about this engine and as you can see the center cylinder is actually centered along an axle which is convenient no matter the actual firing order or crank location it's always going to fire in an order one two three because there really is no other way because they all just go by themselves. Moving along to this side, you have a flywheel and manifold, as well as you can see the valves. I'll get into that in a second, but the manifold is right here. As you can see, the vacuum, vacuum would go on right here very simply and very easily. If we turn it this way, we'll see the valves. As you can see, they do dip down quite a bit, and that's because it actually uses a three long valve um, stud stroke because the um, one, the 1 1.5 crank meter crank arms that I usually use for my engines for the valve train, they do not have the ability to have that 120 degree offset that is necessary for this actual engine. So as you can see, they do go in that one, two, three pattern. It's very simple. And also, if you take a look at the top here, as you can see, we actually use the um, uh, push arms and rockers for the actual valves. And the, the reason why I use these three long um, axle, 
or connector pieces for the chain or for the valves is so that I can easily detach and then reattach when necessary for maintenance of the cylinder, which I'll show in a second. I'll just take off the cylinder head real quick, which is actually a lot more simpler than you may think, which is surprising. I was not expecting it to be that easy. Anyway, so when you turn it, it pushes the rockers, which push the valves down. And the way that it works is actually when it pulls the valve up, it opens the um, air chamber to go into the cylinder. And it actually runs in a counterclockwise direction looking at the flywheel here. Could spin clockwise, but I don't really feel like rotating this. So yeah, and I use these smooth pieces to make sure that it, the valve is always moving as smoothly as possible. So yeah, um, let's take a look at the cylinder inside. So guys, now that I have the cylinder head off, I can actually show you what's going on inside here. So, as you can probably tell, I'm just spinning around for you real quick. For a better view. I, act, I have actually removed the, the, the valve completely because that's what you really have to do in order to show the, take off the cylinder head. It's really not that easy. All you have to do is detach the push arms here, and then you can do it easily. Anyway, so in here the cylinder, we obviously have moved it with olive oil. And as you can see, with three cylinders, I do achieve the actual 120 degree offset. I'll show the crankshaft in a second, if, or at least try to get a good angle. But as you can see, um, the clacking is just these that um, float around and do nothing. But it's very smooth running. So nothing exciting here in the cylinder head. And yeah. So let's put it back together, and I say, how about we run this engine? Um, before we run this engine, I would like to point out that it, it is kind of a slow running engine. I do have a, some plans for improvement. Um, I may make a second video about this engine if I need to, because um, I do want to improve it. But um, anyway, um, let's run this. Kind of slow, not very torquey you know, it's it's mainly just the concept that's uh, being uh, in place here. So uh, yeah, let's get it rolling. <laughs>
So yeah guys, um, that's gonna just about wrap up today's video. I hope you did all enjoy my newest engine that I've built for you. Um, I don't know exactly what I should build for my next engine. I might um, take up the oscillating engine concept because I know I said I would build more in the future and I haven't. So maybe I'll work on that for now. Although you're going to have to let me know in the comments what you want to see next. So uh, anyway guys, if you want to end the video on the three cylinder with maybe improvements because I might improve it if you want. Please let me know, and I will certainly take a look at your comments. I read every one of them. And yeah, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Again, thank you through so much for 300 subscribers and more at the time of this recording. I believe I'm at um, about 342 or something like that. I don't know. I'm growing pretty fast. Anyway, um, so yeah, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button down, subscribe button down below. And I will see you all in the next video. See you later.